now that the Model S has been on the road for eight years, um, some of these EVs are starting to get to the end of life, you know, okay, setting up a whole mine in these brine ponds and getting all this lithium and reprocessing it, that's a grind. If we can just take a little bit of lithium out of the battery that we use that's already in good shape, um, this is a really exciting potential. We've seen J.B. Straubel, the co-founder of Tesla, leave to mysteriously start Redwood Materials, a battery recycling company. I have to think they're going to partner with Tesla or I'm baffled if they wouldn't. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really curious, maybe you could uh, walk us through this chart of this, you know, it's kind of saying what I was just saying is now we're starting to get into this new era of where battery recycling is going to move into the spotlight. The history of battery recycling is whenever you're done with your battery, you'd either just throw it away or you'd give it to a general purpose technology recycler. But now there are dedicated companies looking at doing just battery recycling. So what you see over here are examples of some companies in the world, right? Atero in India, Glencore is doing stuff in Canada. There are a few companies in Europe like Umicore, which makes cathode is also looking at recycling. You very rightly pointed out Redwood Materials. So JB is somebody who I've worked with. I respect very, very much. Let's see what they've got up their sleeve. They're going to come out with more details soon on what they're doing. But the fact that they're interested in recycling should be, should be a sign to the market that there is a huge opportunity and taking advantage of the large input feedstock of used battery cells coming back to yep. make materials again for new batteries. And Redwood Materials has put out zero info about what the hell they're doing, but they have a logo and their logo offers the biggest clue ever, which is it's a closed little loop. And that's what they've Tesla's hinted at so many times is a closed loop recycling, um, really this idea to capture as much as possible from the waste. So I've always thought that that's like got to be their focus. Absolutely. And I mean, even the impact report that was released a couple of weeks ago has a huge section on, on battery recycling, yeah. which by the way, like shout out to the people who wrote that report. One of my favorite ever reads from Tesla. Like, yeah. Shout out to report. Martin. That was, I, I hope they keep doing this every year. Cause that was so good. And like all the stuff you're saying of how do we think about cobalt? What's our water usage? You know, all these things we're kind of discussing, like Tesla's actively working on to really just push that envelope on the life cycle emissions to be as good as possible. Like, I think people don't really realize that. Like, so many electric car companies are just like, oh, it's like greenwashing. Like, Tesla, I, I really just think they don't get enough credit for, like, literally, like, the whole vegan leather seats thing is kind of an example to me of where, like, you know, I'm not a vegan. I love a good cheeseburger, but I'm trying to reduce my meat consumption, you know. But just that ethos of, like, we want to reduce animal usage. We want to be ahead of the curve. We want to try a new material. Like, they don't really get enough you know, just kind of as a shareholder and like fan of the company, I'm like, I love that ethos that they have. And it's, it, it goes to every little part of their supply chain. They're thinking about how to maximize that sustainability. But for recycling, it's not just going to be a game of, of the companies. It's also going to be a game of partnerships. So what we see over here, just as an example, in Europe, there's one example of a partnership between Umicore and Northvolt and BMW. So Umicore, like I said, makes cathodes, but also wants to get into the recycling game. Northvolt will take the cathode from Umicore, make cells. Those cells will be then used in BMW vehicles. And when the BMW vehicle reaches end of life, that cathode from that cell in that vehicle will get back to Umicore. And so it'll close the loop. So this is just another example. There are many examples like this of pan industry collaboration between companies in the supply chain. That's also what's fascinating about the battery supply chain. 10 years ago, each of these companies and each of these segments were working in their own silos and maintaining arm's length relationships as a consumer versus a producer. But now these companies are partnering together because they're seeing the value in the challenge, but they're also seeing that they need to partner in order to keep up with the demand out there. Yeah. And I also think it's like everything was kind of child's play in beta before Tesla, because it's like, now we actually have a million cars on the road. Like that is a lot of stuff to recycle. And I feel like before Tesla really existed, like there wasn't that conviction that there would be millions and millions of EVs on the road to build this recycling infrastructure for, you know, it doesn't make sense. But now that Tesla's really hit scale, it's sort of like an inevitability that we're going to need to work on this. And I'm curious, you know, okay, so I have a battery pack that gets recycled. Like, can you give a rough estimate? Is it like 50% of the materials I can reuse at the end of it that I can use back? Is it 80%? Is it 5%? You know, how, how should we think about how much they can extract from that used pack? So with more process innovation, you can get to a point where around 90% of your materials will be highly Wow. Accessible. But we're not there today. So today, we're at You know a point Elon is going to have drop some crazy stat like that 
on Battery Investor Day, though. I'm and sure. I would love that. <laughs> I, I would totally welcome that and love that. And I hope it happens. Yeah, that's awesome. Actually, and I wanted to go on this other chart. What I noticed that you didn't mention is China out here dominating capacity again for recycling. China dominates capacity for recycling because of two reasons. Number one, they've got 65 to 70% of the battery factories in the world within their borders, as well as over 50% of the electric vehicles in their borders, as well as so many laptops and cell phones that also produce the batteries. So they're seeing this challenge. A lot of it is also being driven by regulation in these, in, in these different geographies. China has done a very good job of having directive policy towards recycling on a national level. In the U.S., the state of California has done quite well in terms of putting out regulation on recycling. And this is true of recycling in general, technology, product recycling, as well as battery recycling. But if we get more directive regulation at a state level, at a national level across the U.S., the market opportunity will increase. Some of those companies that are in the North American portion of this chart will start to ramp up their capacity to keep up as well. Yeah, and this is a fascinating um, geopolitical situation that's unfolding. Like if the world was a game of risk, I think what China is doing is genius of like, okay, we're not, our expertise in the internal combustion engine's not there, um, but there's a massive transition in the electric vehicle push. We can really be a leader and a dominant player in this future of propulsion technology. And, you know, what, re going through your presentation here, looking at the data about how they're really on in a place to really own the infrastructure and backbone of creating these batteries um it seems like they're really ahead of the curve of almost every country and that in terms of capacity at least um and they're really pushing for it you know they got tesla in there to build a factory there i have there's just so much going on where i see china really pushing forward and becoming a leader in this technology um that i think is just a really brilliant move for them like geopolitically and i'm curious if you could uh you have a slide here about the recycling industry in its nascent stages and multiple threats to reach full scale and profitability. Um, kind of the theme of our discussion of like, things are a lot harder than they seem, like to just recycle a battery and get 90%, that's just magic. So Once again, these are all solvable challenges. By yeah. no means am I saying these are roadblocks that are gonna stop the industry from growing at all. But if we were to take an honest look at the industry today, these are some of the challenges that recycling faces. So number one is the fact that for any chemicals industry and recycling at its core is a chemicals industry, you need to have the lowest operating cost possible to be able to compete. So what you need in recycling is a large input feedstock with the number of battery cells coming back. So issue number one is whenever EV cells are retired, they still have value left in them and they're being downcycled and being used as energy storage battery cells. So for example, in China, BYD buses, they have their battery packs for two and a half or three years and then they're using them to do energy storage projects for, for behind the meter grid applications. Wow. And this photo over here is Amsterdam Arena is using recycled Nissan Leaf batteries to power itself. Wow. Wow, it's awesome. But at the same time, what does that mean? That means that those battery cells are not going into a recycling circuit yet, that they're being extended and being put out and deployed for even longer. Oh, yeah, the second life, it's differentiating from uh, the recycling part. That's interesting, because I know Rivian mentioned that they're big on their second life batteries for stationary storage as well. Absolutely. And every single automaker is going to want to be big into second life, because going back to earlier around generating new revenue models around batteries, rather than just selling batteries and getting the revenue, this is a very easy way to generate more revenue is you know, I don't know what the business model is around the Amsterdam Marina, but I'm willing to bet that somebody was the asset owner of that battery and depreciated that battery over use and then went ahead and sold it and essentially recouped what they would have written down in terms of the battery value.